Welcome back to my limited series, first time being an expat, kind of, where my husband Matt and I break down our experience living in the Netherlands for the last couple of months and compare it to life in the States. On today's episode, we talk about my first doctor visit, moving into another apartment with more mold, going to the movies for the first time here, and some other realizations we've had since our last episode. As always, we love to hear about your expat experiences or thoughts on this, so keep DMing us on Instagram and leave your comments on YouTube, and you can reach out to me on Instagram at Danny Official, D-A-A-N-I Official. You can reach Matt on Instagram at Wigtronic, W-I-G-T-R-O-N-I-C, or you can comment on YouTube by searching first time being an expat, dot, 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 kind of. Thanks so much for hanging out with us, guys, and we hope you enjoy today's episode. One of the reasons you're probably listening to the show is because you like to learn new things, and Skillshare is the place to do just that. One of the founding principles of the internet was to give people access to information they wouldn't normally have access to, and Skillshare has taken this to the next level by creating 29,000 courses with new ones added to their roster every week, ranging from creative writing to marketing to website development and really whatever you're looking to get better at. You'll get to try Skillshare free for one month before choosing between two very affordable options at $29 a month or $165 for the year, which comes out to about $13.75 monthly, which is an insane deal for the amount of knowledge you'll be getting access to. Get 30% off your annual membership at the link in the show notes and start learning, well, everything. Now back to the show. I swear to God. Tux, it's like he knows when something is happening and he's like, let me just make some noise for you real quick. Let me just create a mood. Let me just... Are we recording? Phone. We are, yeah, look, it says we're, we're recording. No, we, we, we know we're recording because he is hawing down on yeah. that phone. He's like the... that thing. Yeah. Cool. The, what the do you want to talk about? Stick? <laughs> the action stick? The so, action yeah. stick. Everyone in film is like, you idiots. Cheers. What is this, our fourth one? I don't know. Why don't you start? Um, I had to go to the doctor. So as a foreigner, I've, I've never had to do that internationally before. Uh, I had signed us up for travels. Tra- travels, wow. Traveler Traveler's insurance. insurance. Traveler insurance. Why can't traveler's I say? insurance? I had signed us up for traveler's insurance and it cost about four fifty for <laughs> sorry, Tux is growling at himself, chewing his bone. <laughs> okay. It cost about four fifty for the two of us for the three months that we're here. And um this visit cost a hundred forty nine euro. So it's 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 you know, paid for it itself by a third but I started to get a sinus infection Matt and I have been calling it like the Netherlands cough like since we landed here everyone has this like wet just like wet cough and so we avoided it for about six weeks and then I just like woke up with razor blades in my throat and then like crazy post nasal drip and it wasn't going away after like two weeks. So I was like, let me get some antibiotics. And so I went to this, uh, I think it's called like Travel Doctor. And it's inside of an Etos Etos. I'm not sure if I'm saying the name correctly, but it's like a Dwayne Reed here. And you go up this spiral staircase in the back of the store to this doctor. He sees you for maybe five minutes. Like it, it is not a... Um, like let's sit down and talk through your medical history sort of situation. It's just like tell me what's wrong. He didn't even touch me immediately. was like, yeah, that's a sinus infection. What are you allergic to? And then prescribed me something I wasn't allergic to. So the visit itself was 60 euro. And then I went downstairs to the pharmacy and I had to get a nasal spray and a like seven day course of antibiotics. That was another like 60 euro. 
And then there's a 35 euro fee for not being in the system here that you have to pay. So it sucked to have to pay that up front for something that I was like, oh, I think I can kick this, but um, I just wasn't kicking it. But yeah, AIG emailed me. They already have cut me a check. So that was pretty painless. Yeah, I mean, it, I would suggest definitely getting traveler's insurance if you're going to be overseas for a long period of time. I've, I've never really gotten it before um, just because when I've been touring, the tours have been insured or they've had doctors on the tour with us. So we had someone kind of available to us at all times anyway, and I never really needed access to it. But traveling on our own it already has come in really helpful so i and i just basically googled travelers insurance and there are a couple of sites that come up and you can adjust what you're looking for you certainly don't have to pay what we paid but it does also fluctuate with your age as well i know my parents were looking into getting traveler's insurance because my mom is um, an, in like chemo treatments right now and she sometimes needs hydration infus infusions afterwards. And so they were thinking in case she needs to go to a hospital while she's here. Um, and for them, it was going to be what we paid for one week because they're in their 70s. So unfortunately, it does seem to uh, fluctuate dramatically dependent on your age, but as people in their late 30s, early 40s, 450 didn't feel too crazy for three months. But yeah, so if you're going to be traveling for a while, um, I would definitely suggest it. When did we, when was our last podcast? The last one we had done our like anxiety uh, extensive pros and cons list. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. So had we gotten into this place? No, we're in a new place now. So, yeah, um, we moved like across town. Yeah, so we're on the kind of west, southwestern outer reaches of those if you look at downtown amsterdam there's all the canal rings and we're like kind of like that southwestern corner and i feel like we're right on the edge of where you feel like you're in the city and then if you walk like a couple blocks west of us towards like that metro station mm -hmm. it starts to get like more kind of corporate -y, new uh like new builds that, yeah uh, like more apartment like um uh, like uh apartment buildings like the big you know 50 unit, unit like, yeah buildings versus the like smaller two or three unit buildings that we're like currently in um but i think one thing that we've learned that is like kind of a thing here because of how wet it is year round and the humidity um even with it being still cool the humidity levels are really up so there are mold issues you guys um, it's been a, so it's we've, been a journey <laughs> we've had mold issues in this place yeah in addition to the two apartments ago mm -hmm. when we first the got when we told you guys about yeah uh, this this one was um arguably it was worse initially we weren't sure what it was they had told us they had found a leak because someone in an upper terrace had accidentally dropped something like a pot on their roof and it caused a hole but they fixed it and they were like it might smell a little bit from that but it didn't actually smell at all in the area that happened but we started poking around in the bedroom and it, we just found this like black mildew everywhere on the external wall and luckily they were really cool about it they got professional cleaners in within a few days to mitigate it we just had to spend the day like out of the apartment because of the chemicals with tux and everything um, but it hasn't smelled since that's all gone i think it's just definitely something to take into consideration like where, wherever you choose to move or visit like long term um you know like a city this kind of reminds me of new orleans a little bit in mm. this way where new orleans deals with like extreme heat and humidity and so and these houses lots of water while they're so sea level. yeah <laughs> below sea level lots of water and while the houses there are also like equally as charming as the ones here um because they're so old you end up with a whole host of issues mm. due to the weather and the heat and humidity um so and yeah just the sheer volume of water that's surrounding everything um here so yeah it's definitely i i it never had occurred to me that this would be yeah a thing here but definitely is and that led us to talk also more about if we do move here at some point what kind of living situation we'd want to be in because i think part of this is like 
you can only do what you can do within your unit. I think any apartment dweller in a major city knows this. If your neighbors aren't also maintaining their homes as well, you're still going to have issues. So like in New York, I would keep my place pretty clean, but I still had cockroach issues. I still had rat issues. And it's because you're just surrounded by so many people and you can't control everyone else's actions within their own homes, you know? Um, and I think that we're at a place where we, it would have to be a pretty amazing situation, I think, for us to be in an apartment, but ideally we would be in a standalone home uh, or something that could be converted into a standalone home, like some kind of like warehouse or carriage house or something that needed to be like fixed up or something but I don't even know the availability of spaces like that I haven't looked into it if that's even an option here I have seen small standalone homes but um they do seem to be more few and far between than your typical like three to four unit apartment buildings um that being said this unit has been the most logistically comfortable apartment it's ground floor um, it's just straight through. It's it's clean. It's got a nice layout. We've got a back garden that's fenced in. It's really easy to let tucks out. So that's been really, really nice. And um, we're also really close to multiple forms of public transportation between the tram and the subway. Um, and I've been getting more comfortable riding my bike around, which has been really great too. But yeah, I think um, this has been a, a comfortable situation, but I think the mold thing has been pretty big. Because also, if you have any pre-existing health issues, especially autoimmune conditions, mold and mildew can be a huge trigger. So for me, that's been a big concern for sure in terms of finding something if we were to move over here. Uh, I get a little scared about like getting something sight unseen and then potentially having mold issues that we have to deal with and that is such a pain in the ass to have to mitigate because we've also been through this before you know when we first moved to nashville yeah. uh and then like that uh renting for the first couple of years but then like buying you know we bought sight unseen and yeah look at what we i mean we literally <laughs> have done everything you can possibly do to a house without tearing it down like we we've, <laughs> we've completely Got gutted it, yeah. From roof to, you know, as our girl Heather McMahon would say, tip to taint, we have touched that house. Like, <laughs> truly. Yeah. And uh, we've also learned yeah. that lesson. So it's like, it's mm -hmm. not a lesson we need to learn again. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I don't mind doing the work if you have, if you have the budget for it and it feels worth it to you. But most importantly, if you have somebody you trust to do that work. And we really lucked out with our contractor in Nashville. Shout out to Shores Building Company, if anyone's looking for an amazing contractor in Nashville. But Stephen Shores was incredible. It was very trustworthy, very fair price. And you, I, that's such a rare thing, I think, to find a contractor you trust. And so you definitely have to go into doing work on a place with a different mindset um, but that also brings up a point about the the scene over here yeah for contractors it's like how what does that i even have look no like? even no i have no idea as to how that even works mm -hmm. how that process is even started um yeah if they work straight through you know or if it's broken up and takes forever like oh so we're talking about this like we have the money to do it <laughs> we're so don't. broke right now it's uh it's pretty ridiculous i mean I, I, we've said that we're super happy that we have invested in ourselves in this trip to really get an idea of like what it would really truly be like to live here and we needed to do this but man it has cost a lot of money i mean we were able to get half of our the place we told you guys about that we moved out of, we were able to get half of that back, so that's good. But yeah, I mean, we're paying like at least twice what we would probably normally be paying for regular rent here or, or most places that we would choose to live. But to be able to see the country in the way that we have, um, like we've been taking all these day trips out. Mm -hmm. Like we went to Harlem today, which is a town or a city 15 minutes, 20 minutes train ride west of Amsterdam. Uh, and it's only a few miles from the North Sea uh, and there's like a huge national park on the other side of it. So it's definitely from what we like have learned going on these little day trips to these smaller towns or smaller cities, 
um, it's it's kind of like put everything into context and perspective, I think, for life, what life could look like over here at all these varying levels. You know, we got Amsterdam and Utrecht, which are the two biggest cities that we've been into. Yeah, um, we haven't so been far. to the Hague or Rotterdam yet, which um, I would like to get to. Yeah. But and then like Hilversum's probably mm-hmm. at the notch below, right? And Harlem is maybe a little smaller than Hilversum. Maybe? I don't know. It's, it was hard to get an idea of the, the sizes, but... But I think like anywhere you go or are wanting to go in the world, like this is definitely like a really good way to, to kind of scout out what life could look like in that um, in that country. At least with a country this small, it's like really yeah, easy I mean, to do that. It is so easy to get around uh, to use Amsterdam as our jumping point. Usually every weekend we're going to a new place just to get an idea. So like Friday we went and saw some friends in De Bilt, which is like a small – town outside of Utrecht and that was very sweet very easy to get to from Utrecht so if you wanted to have the advantage of being near a bigger city but not pay the price of being in a bigger city and have a little more privacy have like a full home that could be a good option Um, Harlem was so sweet today so much character we went for the cursed market as well which is like the Christmas market and it was like painfully adorable Uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) so that was really fun to see the city in a really festive way and it was it's probably my favorite place outside of Amsterdam I think maybe that we've been to maybe maybe there in Utrecht in terms of places I would consider living if it wasn't Amsterdam what do you think yeah I think Harlem and Utrecht for me are the they're they're just more mellow more laid back but you still have a lot of like the oldness that like a city like Amsterdam provides they they both both of the cities have that and canals and uh cobblestone streets and like just um these artisan shops and mom and pop shops the architecture Mm -hmm. but uh and I think I said this in a previous episode but it is just so crazy to me like how quickly you go from city town life into absolute farmland it's just like a light switch you know mm-hmm. like you're, you're on the train leaving the town and within like a minute it's just mm-hmm. like boom green flat farmland with just a bunch of chunky sheep so there's really nothing in between you know as far as uh like middle ground like you know like in the states you have like the suburbs right you know so like well you've got your like major metropolises right like your a cities like la new york right then you've got your b cities like a nashville chicago then you've got your c cities like a cincinnati or like a philadelphia or something but even those like all those multiple levels mm. like each one of them have this whole like outer ring yes. of like buffer before you're like in the sticks right so, but it's like it, you've got a lot of layers though basically is what i'm saying from like major metropolis down to like country like nothing around but you. like here you know, here it's just it's like a, it, i think here it's a because it's such a smaller country the contrast is much starker more stark mm-hmm. right so yeah you have like the major city and then maybe like a town like DeBilt, right, on mm-hmm. the outskirts of Utrecht, That's like little towns like that kind of circling the major cities. But then we're talking like maybe uh, a couple, like a handful of miles, you know, in any direction, and then boom, nothing. Not saying that that's good or bad. It's just it's just interesting to me because I don't, I don't know that I've ever been anywhere in the world like that. Yeah, I don't know if I can say just because I think most places I've traveled outside of America have been – major cities so i haven't really traveled outside of those cities once i've been there so this is the longest i've ever been in one place outside of the u.s at a time you know so Mm -hmm. what else have we been talking about the weather still sucks this time of year (laughs) yeah i'm so tired you guys i'm so tired of listening to him talk about this weather it's winter almost I, yeah, I, I fully thought we'd been in winter, and we're not even in winter yet. Um, they did have, like, a cold snap, the last, like, uh, a week ago, whatever, and it was uh, maybe highs in the mid-30s. Um, lows were, like, upper 20s, but it is very windy here in the wintertime, so that all is just magnified. It just feels so much colder than it actually is. And I, we even started seeing our first little bits of ice on the road, you know. I would say having a proper boot for 
winter here is clutch because the shoes that I'm currently wearing, I am trying to get through the rest of this trip with them, um, but I may end up having to buy. Yeah, you're going on the edge a little bit. I am, yeah, because I've already had like a couple little. Not, I haven't fallen. Don't make me use that travel insurance <laughs> again. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, I went to my first movie this week with our buddy Norman to see the Beyonce Renaissance movie, which was amazing. But the movie theaters here are incredible. And I felt like such a tourist and I was nerding out so much. She but took a video of it. You should post that I'll video. I'll post it on uh, the gram um, and also on my TikTok. But it is, firstly, they're immaculate. Like, so, so clean. Um, you just buy your tickets online. You scan it to walk in. Super easy. You walk in and it's like you are in a mini grocery store. They have, like, all of this popcorn that's already prepared just open up the the um thing the cabinet whatever that it's in and you take it out uh they have soft serve that you can put together yourself with like little stroop waffles you can put on top or sprinkles and sauces and then they have like a whole pick and mix but then they have aisles of like pre-bagged candy they have a starbucks inside they have a whole wall of like carbonated beverages I mean, it's like really next level. And then you get to the theater and you have a very comfortable seat, but also the aisles are wide enough that if someone has to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the movie, they're not climbing over you and you're not, it doesn't become this like very unwanted, intimate experience with someone's ass in your face. Like they have enough room to just walk by and leave. It's just the efficiency. It, again, it's just really does it for me. It was great. And then, you know, I got out of that around 11 PM and I rode my bike by myself through Vondel Park all the way home. And Vondel Park is like their central park. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was just, it was so magical. It was really beautiful. I just rode my bike through the park alone there were people around of like all ages and it just felt really safe and just like with the lights and everything i don't know it felt it felt i felt a little bit like i was in a movie it was kind of amazing i'm not gonna lie i mean i, I felt I would, very grateful in that moment i would say that this is definitely the safest country i've ever spent time in i've been in 31 countries now 32 countries and I, it's, this is something being a tall white male that I, you know, don't normally think about, but it just occurred to me just how, cause I won't shut up about it. Well, also it's just so <laughs> easy here. It's just so chill and mellow. Everything's efficient. People are minding their own business, doing their thing. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't see a lot of sketch. You don't see you know there are there's a, a very small homeless population that i've seen i can probably in the last two months we've been here count on two hands how many homeless people i've seen yeah whereas um, like in la you you go over that in a day yeah. not even oh, yeah. you know but yeah the, there's uh you know there, you see like kids having a good time on like a friday night or whatever but it's not like that antagonistic yeah they're like just like a little messing with you kind like of a vibe. little it's loud like, and like having fun within yeah. their group it's nothing that feels like oh should i cross the street you know let's put it this way for any nashvillians i would never go to a movie at opry mills ride my bike back across the river to shelby bottoms park and ride home alone at 11 p.m or for new yorkers i would never ride through like, although I totally have, uh, Prospect Park, Prospect or, Park yeah. like Central Park at 11 p.m. alone as a woman. Or I would, you know, I'd probably do it if I had other people with me or something. But never in Nashville. Like, I would never, absolutely not. And, like, to, to be completely by myself in a foreign country doing this. I mean, I listen, having lived in some major cities, I will forever have my head on a swivel. That just, it gets ingrained in you to do that. But to be able to just feel the sense of like most likely it's going to be cool it was just such a nice feeling to to feel that way when you don't get to feel that that often in the states and i and i'm even talking from a place of, of privilege you know like i'm not a person of color i'm also not like a smaller woman either i'm like you know got some meat on me 
wouldn't be that easy to uh to grab me <laughs> and like carry me away but yeah it just I don't know it, it was it felt really special to be able to do that and um I'm really having a hard time thinking about leaving that and going back to the state of the states yeah that's really struggling I definitely like thought a lot about like you know in the states what we're dealing with right now with all the gun violence you know it's pretty much what like at least one mass murder a day it was like it's like 470 mass murders um that have been committed thus far this year and it's just so bring you think about it, you're like oh my gosh like how is that even possible and but then you think about how numb you are to it only after you're away from it for a while and you're like wow i'm not subjecting myself to the news i'm not i'm not it's not around me like every day uh because over here it's a completely different situation and i think for me it's been really sobering just being like wow like this is what we're completely immersed in daily and And you have to protect yourself it's almost like you have to become a little bit numb in the sense of like well you go in you go crazy yeah you go crazy especially if you're an empathetic person you're a sensitive person it's like i have lost days of my life to just like sitting at home crying thinking about these children who have been murdered, these families that have been destroyed. And it's like, if you are trying to just live your life, you almost have to learn a more efficient way to grieve, which sounds crazy to think about grief and efficiency in the same sentence. But um, being away from it and, and then hearing events that happen, it definitely feels like it's been landing harder because you don't hear about it that often so it it, over here so it does feel like a bit more shocking when you're just hearing it continuing to go on in the states but i would say that if you have the means and are interested in life outside of what you know having a palate cleanser culturally (laughs) that 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 this is absolutely like the way to do it to get that context to get the contrast you know of what you've been living in versus what you could be living in. And that, you know, it's like any anywhere in the world you go, like you can have this, if especially if it's for like a long enough period of time, I think there's like what I would call like the honeymoon phase of like any vacation, you know, mm-hmm. any vacation typically is just gonna be in a honeymoon phase. It's gonna be like a week or two away, you go to Ireland, you go to Thailand, whatever, you're on vacation, you come back and nothing, you know, nothing's changed except for you just getting away from your job for a couple of weeks or whatever. But here, like what we've done doing eventually will have been three months away. Mm-hmm. It really does feel like enough time away that it is a palate cleanser, but it's also just this like perspective that I don't think we would have had if we just yeah. came to the Netherlands for like a week or two. You know, Totally. So. And, and one of the things that I've been talking about with Matt too is just like, this thing I'm, I'm really going to try and hold on to as best I can when we get back. But I think, and this is coming from someone who is pretty aware of what they spend, how they purchase. I am a little OCD about recycling and like doing all of the eco things. And being here, I feel like, I feel like the kind of American that Europeans are like, ugh, Americans about, which is crazy because um, we're so aware of our like footprint and um, our, our usage of things. But even just with Amazon, it's like I've only used Amazon twice since we've been here. And one was to get a travel yoga mat, which I just couldn't find in a store. And the other one was to get some supplements that I also couldn't find in stores. And that's it. And so I haven't had a lot of like waste from packaging. I haven't contributed to like the carbon footprint of the, the de- all the deliveries. And you know, back in the states, I was probably getting stuff honestly multiple times a week, just because I was like, oh, I don't want to be in traffic in LA. I'll just like have it come to me instead of having to drive somewhere or whatever. But I think being here, so many people, and it's funny because everyone leaves their blinds open here. They, they don't seem to care if you are looking into their homes. And everyone has this very minimal aesthetic. It's just clean, but it looks warm and inviting. But it's just, there's not a lot of clutter. There's not a lot of stuff. And I it feels like 
people have a good sense of what they really need to be happy, what they really need to live and to thrive. And it's not like, oh, I need like that little tchotchke or I need that little thing. Keep up with this person and have that. And um, especially in LA, sometimes I get caught up in feeling like I should have certain things or present a certain way and keep up in a certain way. And I think here, everything just feels very practical even down to the fashion you know we were talking about this with a friend of ours the other day and just saying how like you don't see a lot of women getting like with their nails done over here with like a full beat of makeup on no one's hair is ever done because it rains so much it's like what's the point you know um so people usually just have their hair back in like a ponytail or a bun or something or it's like me and you're just like let it frizz and they're usually just wearing like all black or just like solid colors and like a sensible boot or sneaker. Like I don't I don't think I've seen anyone in a heel the entire time we've been here. And if it is, it's a boot with a heel on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I know any guys listening to this are like, please fast forward. But any any women from at least, well, that's at least like through winter to, or fall and winter time. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. maybe spring and summer. The maybe vibe it's is different, different here, but. Yeah. But but it just feels like everybody has a, like a capsule wardrobe and it's just like, yeah, these are my basic things that I just wear. They work. They look presentable and done, you know, and it's not all of this like I need all these different options to present a certain way. And not that there's necessarily anything wrong with that, but I think – I get a little overwhelmed personally and even as someone who does enjoy fashion like I I still get overwhelmed feeling like I need to have like options and and I think having the simplicity of you know even just like how we're traveling I only have a certain amount of room in my suitcase I can't really buy more things and so I've just like had to learn to be content with like what I have on me and that's been a really good practice and I would really like to hold on to that when we go back to the States for however long we're back there and not feel like I need to just like buy and have and be and look and do, but I don't know. We'll see how long that lasts for. Cause we've talked about this and I, I feel like you can hold on to those things, but I think only for so long because you really are your environment, right? You are the people you hang out with. You are the place that you live and it, it becomes difficult to, retain certain things when your environment is constantly telling you something else so i don't know be a practice in mental fortitude Mm -hmm. i guess do you have anything else that it after a long pause that has just been edited out (laughs) we think that's it (laughs) so we'll come at you guys with at least one or two more episodes i think before we leave. We have some family coming to town, so it'll be fun to kind of get their perspective on it and maybe dissect that with you guys, too. And, uh, yeah, but thanks for hanging out with us again, and um, we will keep you updated on our kind of expat adventures.